welcome to another amazing day at fmtrain.tv. My name is Margaret, and I am here to dis uh, with Jacob Taylor, who is hiding down here, to discuss the wonderful FileMaker and Claris platforms. Uh, Jacob is our head of IT. He's a really fantastic server guy and all around really knows his stuff. Uh, so we're always happy to have him on here to answer our questions or just chat about whatever is currently happening in the FileMaker and Claris server world. Welcome. Please ask questions. I'm going to cover the live stream schedule, which is this riveting little uh, this riveting web page right here. So today we're doing our open file maker server Q and A with Jacob Taylor, who is the other orange person in the top right corner. I, I can do directions. <laughs> uh, we have build, and we're continuing Nick's series next week, which is building extreme reports with FileMaker. Nick is doing four days next week instead of his usual three, uh, and pretty much he's working on this series as we go along about you know how to really import and we, we just covered the import section, but like really, really deal a ton of records in your reports. Uh, Friday, we have importing, extracting, and exporting a folder of files uh, of files in FileMaker. Uh, j will be covering this topic, just basically how do you import a folder with a variety of file types? So, you know, if you've got uh, different stuff in your folders that you need to import and you want to do it in one go, uh, j will be here to discuss and break that down for us. So... If you would like to support the channel, we would greatly appreciate it. We currently run on <laughs> we currently run on three platforms. We run on Discord, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, please ask questions on all three. Uh, we have our FM training annual subscription bubble. It is a hundred plus hours of super high energy video training content. Jacob's a presenter on it. Nick's a presenter on it. Richard's a presenter on it. All your favorite people from the live stream present on it. If you don't know what you're doing with FileMaker, or if you're like, I've got gaps in my knowledge that these streams aren't covering. Please feel free to pick this up. I promise it will help you out. Uh, so feel free to do that. It helps keep us going, helps keep the lights running, helps keep everyone here paid. So thank you very much. If you've already bought it, we greatly appreciate your support. Also, if you buy it, uh, your money goes through my code now. So <laughs> Yes. Okay. So, Jacob, hi. What are we doing today? Nothing. Uh, <laughs> we're going to answer questions about FileMaker Server if anybody has questions. If you don't, uh, we don't have a lot to do today. So um, no. we could, I guess, I, like look through that Linux white paper that apparently materialized. But it has screenshots all the way through install. Actually, yeah. Really? So yeah. I wait, so Christian wasn't kidding. Yeah, correct. <laughs> it's it's like step by step. It tells you like options to refuse and. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, okay. you could. I mean, we might have to sh show you terminal or something, but beyond that, I, yeah, you could probably handle it. Actually, that's that's hilarious. Uh, so that's actually. I think really you can cool. figure out where terminal is. So <laughs> that's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got the first question. Can you explain why server is faster than a file which is running locally? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, so that's probably not always going to be true. However. Uh, and, and I'll and I'll tell you the cases where it's not true, and then explain why. So, for example, um, one so for certain operations that you do in FileMaker, uh, your biggest constraint with a hosted file um, will be network latency. And so, oh now I'm I have boxes of myself. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Did I, met, did I mess you up by sharing? My bad. No, that's good. Um, for, so for certain things um, on a hosted file, your greatest limitation is going to actually be the, the network latency, basically, um, time it takes to go back and forth to the server. Um, so if you're retrieving new records or you have to do something that, you know, like pulls records from a table you haven't been to recently, they're not in your pro cache, anything like that, um, that that'll be slower than local, right? So kind of obvious reasons, because if you're only talking to your hard drive and you have to go all the way out to the internet and back again, um, eh, there's some situations where that won't be true, especially if you have a really slow hard drive. But, um, but that said, on the other side, um, situations where servers are faster, for example, um, if you have a really beefy server, or even not that beefy of a server, but it's fast enough, um, newer versions of FileMaker server, uh, and I think they started adding stuff like this in 19.3 or 4, um, there's certain uh, situations where the server will sort for you. Um, um, super recent versions, 19.5 and 6, I think, will do summaries server side in, again, certain situations. There's some asterisks as to when that will or will not happen. Um, I, plugins are involved and, you know, stuff like that. But 
Um, but just, you know, on a, a general, a boring old summary field or something like that, um, often the FileMaker server will do the work for you. So that actually is, is almost the same conversation because what it is doing is you're saying, hey, I want a summary of this table uh, or, you know, this this found set on a particular field, right? You're trying to like add up the number of whatever, just, you know, a summary. Um, you're trying to add up something or su sum it or total it or something like that. The server also is in the same position as you would be locally in pro. So you ask it for the summary and it goes, oh, sure. But it's talking to its own hard drive, right? And that's essentially local. It's just not local to your computer. It's local to the server computer. And so it'll do the calculation, which it may have more CPU, more RAM, faster hard drives, you know, anything like that. And if you spent a little bit on your server, it might be quite fast, actually. Um, and then it will return that list to you. And so you go to the server, ask it for something that might be a lot of work if you did it locally. It does the work and sends the answer back to you. So in under certain circumstances, it can actually be significantly faster than local. Um, let's see. And it's not driving a display either, I guess. Yeah, correct. That uh, that won't matter too much, but... Um, oh, what's... Sorry, what's the current re version of recommended? Um... I don't know if we're uh, capital O officially endorsing 19.6, but I'll put it this way. Um, I'm migrating the server that pays RCC to 19.6 at the end of the day today. Um, so if you're looking for an endorsement, that's probably it. Um, at some point, we'll maybe make that louder or more public or something like that. But um, I've put it on a number of customer systems. We really haven't had issues with it at all. So uh, Windows Server for FM is depreciated deprecated yeah oh, sorry. um <laughs> i think the answer to that is yes um insofar as there does not exist currently and i have to put that asterisk on it um there does not exist currently a build of claris server that runs on windows um we have a sneaking suspicion that that will not remain true um, that at some point there will be a Claris server that runs on Windows, um, but that may look different than what you're used to. So, for example, right now we have a uh, right FileMaker server, we'll say 19.6 as the example. You have a, a, a unique build that runs on Mac. You have a unique build for Ubuntu. You have a unique build for Windows. Um, those may get collapsed or combined into one. Um, and that will be the Linux build, actually. Um, and so, for example, using technologies like Docker, which uh, Claris has made multiple different posts on, and I happen to think that kind of points the direction, actually. Um, but using a technology like Docker, uh, you can pretend that you're a different operating system. And so like when modern versions of Windows, Windows 10 and Windows 11 have a Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, I think that even theoretically you could do Windows or I think you could do it without Docker, frankly. I don't know how easy it would be or anything like that. But um, but that said, if you just use Docker and Dockerize the, the Ubuntu version of uh, FileMaker server that could run on Ubuntu. Yes, it could probably run on Mac and it could certainly run on Windows at this point um, with some finagling. Uh, that work would be would not be yours to do though. Um, so that would be like, we'll say in the installer, if you will. Um, that'd be, it'd be something that Claris would deliver to us. Um, and again, that would be Claris server, not uh, the current FileMaker server product. So um, for the time being, yeah, we have three different platforms that we direct that they we have three different platforms they are directly supporting Mac, Windows, and Linux. So cool. Um, there you go. We have a fat question from Twitch. So ooh. I'm gonna read it out loud. You can read it yourself. I'm developed. I've developed some tools used by 50, 60 in our team. I'm moving from client version only to a hosted version Linux. The problem I'm having is how do I import data into the server version via SQL? I've created Linux DNS on the server, but how do I actually get the client to use that DNS? Uh, the backend tables are AWS Redshift tables. Um, there is a, I don't know where it is. There's an odbc.ini that you have to configure. Um, you shut FileMaker Server for Linux down 
you'll need to add a configuration block for it. Um, I don't know what Redshift um, is compatible with. So if it's like a MySQL or a Postgres-like database system, it will use one of those. Um, and, but you'll need a, a host address, a username, password, port, details like the table name, you know, uh, standard database details, ODBC details. Um, but those get put in an ODBC.ini that's located on the, uh, in this case, Linux um, FileMaker server. Um, when you boot it back up, that will those um, that'll be available to you, basically. So, okay. Um, Let me know if that answered your question, Kim. Uh, and otherwise, ha feel free to send me some follow up questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken, if you were to set up a new FMSP server now on AWS, is there a performance preference for Mac, Windows, or Linux? Mm -hmm. Well, you wouldn't do Mac because it's too expensive. Unless they fix that, which uh, AWS might have. Um, they used to be uh, two bucks an hour or something like that because it's they were meant for build servers or something like that. It's possible with the M1s or the M2s that AWS will begin offering them. Uh, okay, Cr Christian Smith uh, proffers Linux as the answer to that question. Um, I was going to say, I think they're close enough at this point. Uh, re we, we basically almost almost universally deploy Windows. Um, I'm sure the Linux is either faster or equivalent for everything. Um, it was slower for a little bit, but I believe those specific, that was like specific operations were slower on Linux. And I think that's been completely resolved. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah, Linux is cheapest for sure. Um, it'll be at least 30% cheaper and sometimes half um and also due to kind of feature differences um uh the linux ends up kind of outperforming on cost so if you're specifically cost sensitive that's your biggest thing um linux will uh, linux will always be the thing that i'll tell you um assuming you don't need something that doesn't run on linux um, for example, like the 360 Works plugins don't officially support it yet. I don't know that that doesn't mean they don't run on Linux, but um, but they're not. It's not an official support situation yet for all their stuff. So that's just as an example. Um, if you're using Monkey Bright, actually, his stuff runs on even unreleased versions of the software. So uh, you'll be good to go if Monkey Bread's your main plugin. Kim. <laughs> Christian. Uh, Kim, kind of at a follow-up point, yes, the connects were made and the INI is set. Maybe I need to reboot. Uh, you uh, So again, you do have to shut, completely shut the FileMaker service and turn it back on again. Um, that is a required part of the setup. It doesn't do any of it live. Um, I actually, to be honest, I'm a little disappointed in that. Um, I'm a Linux person. I have no problem editing a config file. Um, but the reason I say I'm disappointed in it as like a user experience thing is because the old, um, uh, I'll say the old FileMaker cloud, not the current one, but like the, the version one that you had to set up in your own Amazon account had an amazing user interface for adding ODBC connections. Um, you could go click and say, you know, drop down MySQL, you know, address table, like all that stuff and hit save. And that was it. <laughs> um, it was amazing. Um, and I would love, I, it's probably exists on the new one um, or the current one. I haven't played around with it too much, so I don't know, but um, it, bringing that either to FileMaker server or Clara server, or wh whatever, um, anything in market on site stuff would be amazing. That would be fantastic. So. I would love to see that rolled out by Claris, actually. I would let people use that use that a lot more readily. Um, just like I'd love to see the uh, the RAM cache um, setting come back to the admin console, which is still gone since 16. They brought most of that stuff back, most of the stuff that they cut out when they did the, the admin console rewrite, but um, not quite everything. Uh, you know, I'm making sure to make sure there's nothing. Oh, okay, here we go. FYI, I might be the only FileMaker developer that's internal to AWS from the person on Twitch. It took a while to get support, but I'm getting there. Huh. So. Interesting. Yeah, developers tend to be scattered interestingly. Internal to AWS. That's nice. 
you should email me and let me know what you're trying to do if it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have data on that. Um, yeah, I haven't. I get maybe they mean internal to AWS, like they're trying to use Redshift on in that in that sense. I haven't heard someone trying to do that, but yeah, like I said, if it's a MySQL or Postgres compatible database, it sh uh, should work theoretically. I, I'm sure everyone's going to apply an appropriate level of salt and asterisks um, to using that, but yeah, should be careful, basically. <laughs> That's what we always have to say. Mm -hmm. I feel like David Angel has a question. I see it coming. Uh, Waiting for Clara's server to be on distro watch. <laughs> I wish. No. Um, yeah, actually, I think the fi I think the final the endpoint that would be most ideal. I don't know if Clara's will do this. I've never heard of anything like this. Just to be totally clear, I have nothing. Um, but I think the really cool endpoint if they. If they fully embraced Linux uh, as a supported platform, would be setting up an apt uh, mirror or Clara server so that we could do inline software updates. Um, then you would, I'd say you'd install the deb, but at that point you'd add the software source to your server and then install FileMaker server. And it would just be apt install FileMaker server. That would be it. Uh, and you'd get subsequent updates. So. Um, alongside your regular, you know, Ubuntu base operating system packages and stuff that come in every so often for security reasons or whatever else. So that would be really cool, actually. I don't, I've, again, not heard anything about that. Just that would be a neat love to have. So that would make it, that would make it slick. Um, that would put me in a position to complain loudly at everyone whose plugins do not yet work on Linux um, to get them to that point because it would be, uh, an attractive and potentially automatic platform. I know Christian on a certain forum I won't name has been uh, pushing Claris to um, speed up certain operations in uh, the server software, namely things like shutting down and starting up again and stuff like that so that it can be done more safely. Um, we always, you know, every time I go over that, we always have to talk about doing everything manually with FileMaker Server because it won't necessarily shut down in time. Um, because you can have users connected and you have to boot them and, you know, there's timeouts and all that stuff. And so it just adds up. Um, Windows particularly will, um, if you if you leave your automatic updates on, it will kill FileMaker Server um, because it will get tired of waiting for FileMaker Server to shut down as part of the auto. You know, you've downloaded and installed your Windows updates and so it's going to go for that reboot, right? Um, and so it won't wait long enough at that point for FileMaker Server to shut down. Um, and so you can damage your databases that way, which would be bad. Um, and it, it would be it would be lovely if we got like an expedited shutdown mechanism um, for a FileMaker server. So, um, and Christian Schmidt here has been uh, pushing them for that um, on the Linux one, but I, that'll benefit everybody. Any work that they do on that with kicking clients uh, more efficiently and stuff like that when there's like, a, you know, an operating system update or something like that where the machine needs to go down literally now, um, making that happen more quickly um, will always make it safer to do things that we don't recommend, like automatic uh, updates, which everyone should be doing, but currently probably can't um, for that reason. And so... Um, it, it puts us in a position to, I'm not going to say safely recommend it because of the way the database format works, but um, but it means that the people who don't listen to us and, and leave their automatic updates on or whatever, like, you know, there's and certain businesses just make that decision. They go, ah, eh, the, you know, the risk basically of, um, you know, not having the security updates, like, the day they come out or whatever versus, you know, potential damage to the database or something else like that. Um, they, they make a different risk trade-off. Um, and so they say, uh, it's better to have auto updates on fair, right? Uh, businesses can make their own decisions about that trade-off, but, um, what that lets, what, what that will let those businesses do is actually, uh, not de-risk, but at least significantly lower the risk associated with that decision. Um, and that will both make it easier for them and also probably make my job harder because it'll be more difficult to refuse people who are like, yeah, but we should have automatic updates. And they're right, they should, but uh, we can't currently, basically. So um, the, the farther, the, the, the more work Claris can do in that general direction of um, if 
just various different things that are basically fast software shutdown um, that'll let us do automatic updates and stuff like that in a safer manner. Um, that's that's good for the platform. It's good for the clients. Uh, it won't matter for performance or anything else really because um, this is like, I don't know, theoretically people are supposed to be off the server, but yeah, so. Okay. Uh, as a side note, I sent it to you in Slack, but Kim said they're working on S3 and Redshift integration, and they have given me your e their email to give to you. So Awesome. Perfect. Uh, cool. Oregon Dean, uh, migrating from AWS Ubuntu 18.4 to FMS 19.4 to 19.6.2 this coming week. Do you recommend a new AWS instance or an upgrade in place? No. No, <laughs> just no. Um, so the, yeah, I'll tell you why too. So the Ubuntu upgrade will go fine. You will not have a problem with it. Um, I don't think Claris has any inkling to support an actual upgrade uh, between OS versions like that, basically. So if it were supported, you theoretically can do a 19.4 to 19.6. Again, those aren't actually supported, but like theoretically that would probably work um, or maybe 19.4 to 19.5 or, you know, whatever, one of the covered versions like that. Um, but because the, um, because a lot of what FileMaker server hooks into in Ubuntu changed uh, substantially, frankly, between those two versions. Um, I, I would not expect that to go well. Um, it might work, uh, but but I, I'll put it this way. Uh, I live upgraded our web server. That, that's why I was making the joke at the beginning that if you buy our bundle, it, your, your money flows through code I wrote. Um, I upgraded our web server last night uh, that runs like all of our CC sites and also like our PayPal integration and stuff like that. Um, I did that live, uh, which people think is nuts. And I don't know, maybe they're correct, but um, but that's, it's an Ubuntu. I went from 2004 to 2204. Um, and you can do that upgrade in place on an Ubuntu server, but the asterisk, but the like, the qualifier on being able to do that in place is that you're basically on fully supported software for that. Um, and I would not class FileMaker Server as fully supported software for something like that. Um, so, like, we have the we have PHP installed and like Nginx, which is the web server that we use, um, all of that stuff, it goes straight through. Like there's no problem. You, you know, you'll come up on the new version and it'll go, oh yeah, there's my configs. We're good to go. That's it. Like you just reboot the machine and you're on a new operating system. Um, I would not expect FileMaker server to be able to upgrade safely in that scenario, basically. Um, it probably wouldn't launch it all after the, up, after the OS upgrade. And so then you'd be trying to run a... 19.4 to 19.6 upgrade in place. Um, I guess the safer way to do that would be to uninstall FileMaker Server, do the OS upgrade, and then reinstall FileMaker Server, right? 19, take 19.4 off, upgrade Ubuntu, and then put 19.6 on uh, as your three steps. Um, that all will take time, and it's probably faster to just spin up a new Ubuntu server and use SCP to pull the data across the LAN in, 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 within Amazon, basically. Um, I would expect that to be faster, so. Cool. Um, let, me, let me know if you, yeah, thanks. Okay, from Morgan mm -hmm. Dean, cool. Yeah. So Ken, can you talk, show us a little bit about dealing with users that stayed logged in forever? I thought I had set it, set it to log them off of after like five hours, so overnight, but I have one user that seems to stay logged in for days. Yeah, so there are um how do you put that um there are two different places you have to set the auto boot um and importantly one of them doesn't do anything uh so i'll and i'll explain that so when you want like idle user kick which uh used to be important actually again back to the first filemaker cloud um it would reboot each night um, for, I don't know, OS updates and a backup and, you know, little kind of maintenance stuff. Um, and so, like, we would program into those an, an auto kick uh, so that, yeah, you know, getting close to 8, 10 p.m., something like that, whatever their local time zone was, 
uh, users would be booted off because they're probably not in the office anymore and stuff like that. Um, and the server would like to be able to go down and do its little maintenance. Um, and so the there's but there's two places to do that. One is there's a setting on the admin console that's still there. Um, you can set the like default auto disconnect for um, at pro and go and then separately web direct users and web direct users like default to 15 minutes or something like that. And I think the pro and go one defaults to don't kick them. Um, and so, right. Yeah. If you set, you know, a, a five hour kick or a whatever, right. Number of hours doesn't matter. Um, but, but something an, an idle kick on the server side. Perfect. Um, but there's another place you have to set it and that is in the privilege set um, in the database. So, and if you've not also set it in the privilege set in the database, it will not always happen. Um, there's there's an additional consideration though um, that is missed by most people. Uh, if you inspect the dialogue carefully, you'll see it, but again, it's missed by most people. Um, if your users are full access, they will never be automatically kicked. Never, never. You cannot automatically kick full access users. There's no facility to do so. You would have to script it or you know do some you know, on timer stuff, something like that. Um, some some other way to manage it. Server won't kick them, uh, and the file setting won't kick them. You, in fact, you can't set it to do so. Um, there's two ways people work around that. One again, like I said, something like a timer or some else, some other thing like that. Um, but the other way is you make a new. Basically, you clone the full access uh, privilege set, and you use a you use a cloned version. Because if you make a, a different one, that yes, they have all the permissions that uh, <laughs> they can touch and access, you know, edit everything, whatever, blah blah blah. They have all the they have all the permissions. They're they're the administrator user type thing. Um, that is fine. Um, but if you if you clone it, you you don't use the in brackets, the built-in full access user, you make your own version of it, you can set a uh, an idle user timeout on that. Um, and so then you apply that to your users instead, even for the ones that you want to be full access otherwise. So that's like, and again, it has to, it, either way, it still has to be set in both places, admin console and database, so. A good workaround. Um, Lynn, this is, okay, Lynn, our server is always faster to run scripts than if I take a copy of the file and run the script on my local computer. However, I have one script that sets several fields on 100,000 records using a loop, nothing complex. Locally, it only takes three minutes. When run by a server schedule, it takes 20 minutes. It consistently mm -hmm. takes 20 minutes, even when not, not when no no one is using the server. There is plenty of RAM. I know there could be a lot of factors. You know, anything in general that could cause that, I did a server restart and same result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on the server. So if you're... Sorry, I don't mean to be like trite. Um, it's back to the previous conversation. You have network latency when you're talking to the server. You do not have network latency when you're doing it locally. That is the diff. That is probably the entire difference between the two. Um, if it's reasonable to do so, you may experiment with perform with with perform script on server. Um, because then it's it's the same thing. It's it's doing it locally on the file, but the code runs on the server instead of from pro to the server. If that makes sense. Oh, it's a server schedule. Um, no, that should be that. Honestly, might even be should be faster on the server. So it's a scheduled script. <gasps> yeah, I don't know honestly. Um. Are you on what server nineteen five or newer? If you're on six, that's fine too. Um, Claris, I don't know if it would matter, but it's a potential factor. Um, Claris increased the uh, call it the internal RAM cache on the server side script engine in nineteen five. Um, they quadrupled it, actually. It's one of the reasons that we can't run uh, for customers who would like to avoid paying money on their for a server, right? Um, we put we used to put people on mediums. We can't we literally can't do it anymore. It doesn't fit. Um, and it's because of that decision, basically by Claris. Um, and they they quadrupled the internal memory cache. I think they were targeting this for large file transfers was my understanding. Um, but that it's the same thing. It's the like in memory cache that pro would have or whatever, but on the server side. 
And so, and so you have four X more RAM to work with, four X more records that can be in your working set inside the server side script engine, basically. Yeah, I, I haven't seen anything that is uh, like painfully slower server side. Some things will be a mixed bag. Um, there are things that are honestly humorously still faster in pro, like lo right locally or whatever. But um, yeah, I don't know anything that's like that much worse. I'd be interested to look at it. But if you say it's pretty simple, then I don't know. That should run just fine. Um, I have stuff that I guess it. I guess the stuff I have doesn't doesn't set fields. I have some ugly processes that go and delete stuff and reprocess a bunch of data on similar size data sets. Um, and those are minutes too. It's usually, it's a big script. It updates my whole hosting database every day. Um, but that's like on a, it's a 15 minute, 15 minutes a day or something like that. Um, but that's, I had to. I scheduled it on the server actually because it you it was it was taking over forty five minutes in pro, and then we were edging closer to an hour. And I said I don't want to wait on that. And it, so I was only doing it once a week. Um, and I would like the data to be more up to date than that, to be perfectly honest. Um, and so I uh, optimized everything for server side use, and then did that. And so now it's fifteen minutes a day, and I don't have to think about it because somebody else's problem it's the server's problem so are you actually i have one question lynn um how often are you committing the records like like explicit commit record script step inside you either inside the loop or uh, or outside of the loop if you just run it once at the end or something like that because if you if you were being I would label this as obnoxious, but if you were doing commits after every set field or something like that, three commits. Okay. Yeah, I would only do one, but that still shouldn't do that um, because it's local. I'm just thinking if you're, if FileMaker Server didn't do that, I still don't know why that would be the case, though. It still shouldn't be that bad. Um, because like when you commit on server, it doesn't always go like that's it doesn't necessarily go immediately and directly into the file, like into the FMP twelve. Um there's a bunch of like temp, which people occasionally have like bugs and issues with, to be honest, but there's a bunch of temp caches. Um caches of records, caches of uncommitted records. Um uh, shoot some of the uh some of the, the 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 lists, what do you call them? Um will are like stored not in RAM actually, but in a temp file on disk associated with the user. In this case, the user would be the piece of the perform script on server running. But um, and so I could imagine like if you had a slow disk on the server and then you're committing too often, and so it's writing to a slow volume. Like I, you know, that's like creating. <laughs> I'm you know creating an, a, a reason why that would be slower. Um, realistically, I don't know, maybe report it to Claris or something. Send me a screenshot at, at least, maybe we can look at it. But it doesn't, at least with the details I have, I'm not, I can't, I can't imagine an obvious uh, problem there. So, uh, Lynn's typing still, mm -hmm. so I'm going to let. No questions anywhere else? We, we have a, some people popped in late, so I'm going to ask have this question asked again because I asked it. We're running FM Server 19.5.4 Linux. Is it advisable to upgrade to the latest release? Sure. We're, yeah, we're not like, I don't know, super publicly endorsing it or, or whatever. We haven't come out and said, yes, do it. Um, but I, but uh, and the, the answer I gave earlier is, uh, I am actually moving RCC to 19.6 to literally tonight, actually, in three hours or something. So um, I guess we'll find out if there's a horrifying bug that everyone has missed, but um, <laughs> it looks fine. It looks fine. We haven't we haven't run into any horrible client problems or anything like that. Um, I I would still, as a general cautionary thing, basically be careful with the with the transaction stuff. Um, not because I know it's broke, but because we're still kind of on the first revision of the new script steps. And 
they will get some feedback and or screaming from people, depending on how that goes. Uh, feedback if it's positive, screaming if it's not. Um, and so I am expecting revisions, not like a change in how the script works or something like that, but um, just in case there's weird edge cases or something like that, those will be polished out in later versions. And so I, uh, you know, I would play around with them, but I would hold off running them on, in, you know, running them on financials or something like that um, until uh, some future version of FileMaker server comes out, maybe call it 19.7, since that seems to be the, the numbering system these days. So I don't, no specific knowledge or bugs fixed or anything like that, but just a general kind of precautionary note, wait until the second version of all the code comes out. Uh, same sort of thing when they did the, the record locking rewrite, which came out in 19.1, uh, we told everybody to hold off on server, frankly, generally speaking, until 19.2, um, which had a couple big bugs in it, but like only a couple. Uh, you know, there's always going to be two somewhere, but 19.2 um, was okay. 19.3 had some funkiness for different reasons. 19.4 was basically rock solid. We haven't really had issues with it. Um, I know there's a couple like web direct issues with that one. Also, RCC is on 19.4, so we don't really use web direct though, so. Values for each record. Oh, yeah. Basically doing a timing. Um, in Discord, they're talking about how Lynn, Lynn might um, basically do yeah do, do timing to try and figure out where the time is being spent because it's spending a lot more time than anybody's expecting here running the script. And so if you... For example, build a build a basic profiling system, which is like do it, you know, break your script up into different chunks and then measure the time between the different chunks of the logic. Um, you can you can get a, a a ballpark of where time is being spent. Basically, um, it'll it narrows it down for you. Not so much like that particular thing is slow, but this is the chunk that's getting all the time. And so if you kind of break up the logic the logical chunks of your script into different sections, you can at least say, well, this one is like the one that's kind of ugly and taken like four times more than we're expecting or whatever. So just basic performance, kind of performance-based profiling. So, uh, Anything that needs to be done before, during, or after the upgrade to make sure the update runs correctly? Backups are done. Uh, this is the 19.5.4 to 19.6 yep. person. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so... And I want to say there's a post on the engineering blog about, generally speaking, upgrading a FileMaker server. Um, I think officially RCC doesn't recommend doing that. But to be perfectly honest, I have been doing it. We had some, oh, I got bit 19.3, I think. But that was the last version running an upgrader on a server. Um, if it's Windows, I... After that, I really haven't had any issues, so I wouldn't expect any. Um, your basics are uh, you want to export your schedules beforehand. Um, the actual reason for that is not because they're going to get blown up or something, because um, they won't be. If it runs correctly, you'll just have a server afterwards, and it'll merely be the new version. That's like the optimal outcome. Um, you export the schedules on the server because... If it fails, your um, response is to do a clean install anyway. And so that means that your setup is much faster or your reset up is much faster. Um, but realistically, um, yeah, export your schedules. That'll be one. Just just save them. That's all just so that you have them set aside. You don't have to reprogram them or anything. Um, the second thing is the server software should be completely off. I don't mean stop database server. I mean, go into the Windows Services panel and stop FileMaker server. It must be dead, no processes running, period, end of sentence. Um, and then, yeah, run the upgrader. Uh, it'll tell you to, it'll come back up and it'll tell you to reboot at the end. Uh, please do, always do that, always say yes. Um, and then when it comes back up again, you'll either be live or if you have configured your server correctly, uh, your server will be up, but no databases will be open, which you should always be. That's how your FileMaker server should be configured. If it's not, um, I can, uh, I'm happy to give a, a diatribe on why that is, um, but uh, that's the short version. And so, yeah, then you'll just be on 19.62 afterwards. 
Um, yeah. I, I did that. I haven't done it from 19.54 specifically to 19.62. Uh, 19.42 to 19.62 went well for, uh, I guess it was yesterday actually, yeah, um, for a customer. So they didn't they didn't have any issues. That's all I did. We do, we, um, I do like a, cl a cleanup on the server. So again, it's Windows for a lot of them. So we'll go in, we shut FileMaker server down, like again, stop it, stop it dead completely. Um, apply Windows updates actually, reboot after the Windows updates, um let windows do some of its post whatever it does that takes a minute um shut filemaker server down again because it starts itself um and then run the upgrader basically um, and then the final reboot at the end you come back up you need to qa everything make sure you haven't accidentally broken something or the filemaker didn't i don't know eat your lunch or you know whatever um again there's bugs in this stuff sometimes so um, I, I had specifically 19.3 um, completely destroy the IIS on a server, um, which was not good, basically. I, I, that was an unhappy night. Um, but uh, I haven't seen problems like that recently. So, What about running the upgrader on Linux? I wouldn't do it. Period. Don't. Throw it away. Get a new server. Every time. There's no need. So, um, at some point, we might endorse that, but I probably never will. Uh, not until back to the previous conversation, they give me an apt software source for Ubuntu where I can just fetch fresh patches of FileMaker or server or whatever. Um, I don't. I don't really see any benefit to doing an in-place upgrade on a Linux server. There's never configuration done, like because of what's what Linux or what Linux doesn't support, which is with respect to plugins and stuff like that in the FileMaker community. Um, I I haven't been in a situation where it would make sense to do that, basically. Um, and if you're How would I put that? Um, if you have made significant modifications to your Linux FileMaker server to where like the work to set a new one up is too much, I would reconsider that is the short version. Um, I would consider that you may need two machines instead of one, um, depending on what specifically you're doing. I, I would look. I would evaluate that. Maybe you did, or maybe you didn't, and maybe you made the correct choice. I. That's why I'm not going to tell you you made the wrong choice per se. Um, but just as far as like separation of concerns, having a purpose specific machine, um, you you pay no overhead licensing fees and anything like that for Linux. It's just the literal like installing the updates and rebooting it type of support costs. Um, and so with that in mind, I generally speaking wouldn't do in place upgrades, um, at least for FileMaker server. So. That's a it's a it's a personal recommendation. I just wouldn't do it. Um, I've used Linux for twenty years. I yeah. Can you remind you us on Oregon the, Dean? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Can you remind us on the AWS Ubuntu for a fresh install? Are there any memory or other settings you would recommend? Yeah. Um, one thing that uh, is not set correctly out of the box. Period. Um, is the internal uh, the the FileMaker server um, RAM cache. Uh, that can only be set on the command line uh, and maybe the admin API. I'm not sure. You could probably do it on the admin API. I honestly haven't looked. I should actually. Uh, I should have a. I should put a feature in my database for that. That would be a good idea. Um, but uh, generally speaking, it can't be done on the admin console, which is where it should be. Um, that was that setting was on the admin console in 16 and has not been brought back yet. It's the only one that I wish they would bring back still. Um, out of the box, FileMaker server has a 512 megabyte record cache, uh, which is low, basically. Um, should probably be a gig these days. I think that would be a better default. Um, but then ideally, separately from that, I, I, I would just tell them to put it back on the admin console again, basically. So um, that's the big one. Um, we also, like we RCC... Uh, turn up the maximum log file size, basically. Um, and that lets you have, like, it's like 40 megs out of the box. We turn it to 100. Um, 
I'm, I'm ambivalent about what the number is, but turning that up is useful, um, especially if you have uh, noisy operations. You have lots of server-side scripts that have lots of like old desktop commands that don't run on server and stuff like that in there. You get a log line for every one of those, and they add up pretty quick, especially if the script runs often. And so um, the, the extra megabytes are helpful if you need to go back and check something, basically. Um, what other settings? Oh, uh, technically, I guess we always we always turn off auto open databases. Um, that was the diatribe I mentioned earlier, um, and that is because uh, and, and that's true on Linux and every other platform. Uh, it's not necessarily true that if you try and like reboot for updates or something like that, uh, that FileMaker Server will shut down and close the databases in time. And if the databases, you, if you can't validate that the databases were safely closed which will be a specific log entry in the event.log on the server, uh, then they were not closed correctly and we consider them to be crashed um, because there's a, uh, these days it's less significant, but a not insignificant risk of, of introducing corruption of the file. Um, and the very short version is we, we would like to avoid that. Um, obviously we're consultants and we work in FileMaker and uh, that's a lot of money and we would love to take it except that we don't want that money. Um, we don't want that from our clients, and we don't want that from people in the community. Um, it's expensive to try and eliminate corruption from a file or rebuild modules or any of that kind of stuff. Um, and it's it's basically it's bad money to take from people. Um, it leaves them with a poor product experience. Um, all of those dollars could be spent on new features or something else that's more interesting, more valuable to the business than than literally like someone made made process bad process decisions and introduction to their database, like. Yeah, it's it's just it's not a good reason to take money from people. So, um, and so we we tell people not to do things that will <laughs> introduce corruption to their file because we don't want to take the money. Um, like I said, it's it's lot it's lots of money. We're we're intentional leaving it on the table. Um, it's better for the entire community if they don't damage their databases and if they never have to come to us. Um, in that situation. Uh, I was helping uh, naming no details or names or anything related to it, um, but I've been working with somebody who had that where uh, they were hosted up on, I suppose it's a competitor's server hosting service, um, and that competitor does not follow the process I just outlined, being as polite as I can. Um, and so the this uh, they're not our client, um, <laughs> Uh, that that client, uh, uh, their database was, uh, some of their databases were repeatedly crashed and uh, not restored to a backup when that happened. And as a result, uh, the reason that they came to us actually is because the files would no longer open in server. They were that damaged. Um, and it ran up until that point, until it was no longer tolerable. Um, FileMaker server was crashing, like, like falling over dead uh, three times a day, which is when we got the call. Um, and so I've had to guide them through, um, oops, no, um, I've had to guide them through recovery, uh, getting back to stable, um, which I still honestly think they have some damage in the file somewhere. It seems like it, um, but they're, they're much better. The, the stuff runs, um, they, they took it, they took it as an additional opportunity to do some performance work that had been long uh, delayed and just not just not done because they were concerned because the system was so unstable they didn't uh, correctly they didn't want to do development on a damaged file um, and so and so they had not done it um, and so they took the the holiday break here Christmas or whatever um, to do some performance improvements which have been pleasing to the users basically so um I actually don't know how to answer David Angel's uh, question. So <laughs> he asked if a VLAN must be in a separate subnet, and I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I think those go the other way. I think you have subnets within VLANs. So, but I'm not a super ultra networking expert. I know enough to keep things separate and mostly not shoot myself in the foot, but. You should you should ask someone who has a, a network plus the answer to that question because they'll know off the top of their head and I don't. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we got two stumps today. Um, Ken, I would send that send it to support and then I'll forward it to Nick so that way I have a copy of it. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, yeah. If you have files for Nick's upcoming makeovers, stuff that he wants to do, send it to support at RC Consulting. We make no promises about when that series will happen, uh, just that it is in the works. So, yeah. and then I'll forward it on to Nick. Oh, is he doing? He's doing client. Uh, he thought he like, would take like a couple like random files and then do like an hour like, you know, look at a layout or something and awesome. It. Yeah, so, that'd be cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yes. Cool. So, but if you're yeah, like, I'm anxiously awaiting my Nick rework, <laughs> please don't. <No. laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that to you specifically, Ken. I'm just saying that for anyone watching this in general and after the fact, uh, it'll be a fun thing we do, but. That 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 is for fun educational purposes only. So you know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, if you have weird demo files to send us, I built a file upload thing. But for that, I think you need to send it to support because that'll get it to that'll get it to us most efficiently. Yes. Um, I built a little file bucket for Richard, and then <laughs> he's like, "Wait, just email it to support." And I'm like, "Yep." <laughs> it's a good demo, though. It's uh let lets you lets you uh lets you upload files into our into our CMS basically. So Yeah, I remember that. Yep. Um any other questions, people? Are we wrapping it up for today? We had the full hour, I wasn't sure. I didn't think we'd have any questions, and we had a lot of questions, which is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, server is an interesting creature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's getting less interesting over time, which I'm pleased with. It makes my job easier. That's I always just, an improvement. <laughs> yeah, I just have to remember all the compatibility stuff. Like we had, I did a consult with somebody that's like, oh, we want to go from 16 to 19. And they were hoping they could keep their ancient Windows Server 2012 R2, and it will not be happening. Um, also, if you have any Windows Server 2012 R2s, please get rid of them with a quickness. Uh <laughs> <laughs> they are old and insecure, and you should get rid of them and get on to at least 2019 and preferably 2022. I don't see anything. Lynn, if you ever figure out what on earth is happening, feel free to let us know. <laughs> yes, please. So uh, we're very sorry we couldn't help you with that. Uh, other than that, I think I'm going to wrap it up for today. I don't see anything else. So... I'm going to scooch back into frame. In case you're running like, where does Margaret go? The answer is Margaret goes to sit in front of the other giant monitor to watch questions. Hi. Uh, thank you very much, Jacob. We seriously appreciate this. He'll be back in two yep. weeks. So collect your server questions over the next two weeks to bother us again, please. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm going to share my screen and run the end credits. Bye, everybody. <laughs>